Well, hello and welcome to our Tuesday encouragement today. I'm so thrilled that we've got Stephanie, Stephanie Darling joining us. Uh, Stephanie's one of our link mission partners here in the life of the church. Stephanie, so great to have you with us today. Um, it's great to be here and great to see you again. Thank, thank you. Well, Stephanie, thanks for taking time out to, to share with us today. There'll be some folk in the life of the church who don't know you uh, and don't know what your ministry is. Can you try and share something of what it is that uh, you've been doing um, and why it is that we have you as a link partner, mission partner? Yeah, um, I uh, went to Morelands Bible College with uh, Chris. Uh, we were in the same tutor group in the same year at college. Um, and then after I uh, finished at Morelands, I stayed down in Christchurch. I came to uh, Christchurch Baptist Church for quite a few years. I um, did a, a CELTA certificate and then I um, taught English at the Christian English Language Centre, first in Bournemouth and then in Christchurch and went to CBC all the way through that time. Uh, when I went to Moorlands, I felt that God was calling me to uh, Bible teaching and pastoral work and probably teaching in an overseas Bible college. And in about 2008, I thought that God was giving me a nudge that it was time to head in that direction. Um, so CBC became one of my supporting churches and the door opened for me to teach at the Evangelical Bible College of Malawi in Malawi. Fantastic. And Stephanie, it's been so great to follow what you've been doing during that time whilst you've been at the college in Malawi. Tell us something of what you you were, you were doing uh, and then just explain your context now, if you could, for us. So I have for probably about 10 years been teaching at the Evangelical Bible College of Malawi. Um, I do some of my lectures in English. I do some of my lectures in Chichewa, so which is one of the tribal languages. It's um, the one that's the official language in Malawi. Um, and I teach a variety of different subjects um, there. So some Bible sub book studies, um, some doctrine courses and some uh, and also Christian counselling. And then I came back here for my home assignment um, at the end of July 2019. Um, a little bit uncertain about the future when I came back. There'd been a few difficulties whilst I'd been there um, during my last term and I had an awful lot of questions. Uh, we then had the pandemic um, and I've been stuck here um, and that has created an amazing opportunity to um, do some research, to seek God, to pray um, and to look at bigger issues that are going on in Malawi to do with uh, Bible teaching, discipleship, um, nominalism, leadership development and um, I'm sort of looking at going back to Malawi, doing some research into nominalism, but also developing a holistic discipleship package um, to develop leaders in Malawi and hopefully to build a church that is stronger. Thank you. That sounds so exciting. And whilst you've been back here in the UK, um, you've been focusing on lots of different things. And one of the things you've been thinking about is what we might describe as being the lost art of lament. Um, tell us something ab about your journey with lament. Why is it that you're looking at this whole theme? Um, whilst I was in uh, Malawi last time, I did, I trained um, to be a trauma healing facilitator. Um, part of the reason why SIM set up this training was that we were recognizing that although in Malawi, there hasn't been a civil war, there are actually an awful lot of people that are struggling with trauma through famines, through floods, houses being broken, um, being washed away, blown away, um, and also through the HIV and AIDS pandemic, and then lots of children being left as orphans um, and abuse issues that we were coming across. And so there was this training that was set up. Um, there are hardly any, if any, counsellors in Malawi to try and find a way of actually helping people that would be struggling. Um, so I did that trauma healing facilitator training. Um, I teach 
Christian counselling at the college, so it was also going to be helpful for that. And as I did the training, also started to realise how many of our students were struggling uh, with trauma. And as part of that, also seeing that a way of being healed and of God coming in is actually lamenting and dealing with our losses um, and grieving them allows God to actually come into our hearts to bring healing and to begin to bind up our broken broken hearts. Thank you. And, and I mean, clearly, lament is a biblical idea, isn't it? You read through the Psalms, for example, in other places, you find plenty of lament. But actually, in truth, it's not something that we, especially in the evangelical church in the West, are terribly good at. We, we're asked, how are we? And we tell people we're fine, of course. That's not the idea with lament, is it? Um, lament actually is about being quite honest. How have you come to understand lament? Um, I've come to, to understand it as a, a necessary uh, part. I think if we look at the book of Psalms, then probably half, maybe more than half of the Psalms are actually laments. If we look at the book of Lamentations, it's all laments. Um, if you look at some of the things in other books, so in Jeremiah, the uh, laments. If we look at David, um, he actually spent quite a bit of time lamenting, pouring out his whole heart and life, um, talking to God about everything. So not just living in a fancy bubble and pretending everything is OK, but actually through being real and open and honest with God about where we are and then allowing him to come in and to work in our lives through that. Stephanie, that's so helpful. Thank you. And you mentioned about living life in a bubble. That makes me think immediately of COVID and the restrictions. Um, it seems to me as a nation, we've got plenty to lament, you know, not just our own problem here in the UK. Of course, this is a worldwide issue. There's been plenty of loss and plenty of grief, plenty of things to mourn uh, the departure of in the course of the last 12 months. What, what place do you feel lament has uh, in our lives as we wrestle with issues around COVID? I think an awful lot of people have um, been struggling with lots of losses during this time. So we've missed out on being able to meet up with family and friends. Um, I know CBC, there's probably a lot of people that have missed out on seeing their grandchildren. Um, we miss out on being able to go to the shops or to meet up with people for a coffee. Um, there are people that are dying around us um, and we're not able to go to funerals and to really celebrate somebody's life or to grieve um, their losses. We're not able to go to church and to worship and to meet God um, in the same way. So there's lots of things that we've actually lost as part of um, what we've been going through. And I think it's good to be real about those and to bring them to God and allow him to meet us in that situation. And for him, um, and to remind ourselves that he's still there in the midst of all of that. Yeah, Stephanie, thank you. And part of your journey is that you've actually written a lament yourself. I just wonder whether or not you might be willing to tell us the context for that. How did you come to be writing that lament? And then I just wonder if you'd be willing to share that lament for us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a few weeks ago, I did um, a trauma healing um, updates seminar um, for trauma healing facilitators in Africa. So I was meeting up with people that came from many different countries and um, a great opportunity to work with people from Kenya and Uganda and Nigeria and Rwanda and lots of places and during that seminar uh, which was focusing on lament we were given eight minutes to write a lament but you didn't necessarily have to write a lament maybe create would be better so you could write you could do a dance, you could write a piece of music, you could draw a picture, but in some way to express our hearts and express what is going on um, inside us to God. 
And then at the end of those eight minutes, we were put in little breakout rooms and we were given an opportunity to share what we had created during that time and to be heard without anybody trying to fix us. So to be able to pour out our hearts for our emotions to be heard and for us to be acknowledged. Um, and I found that that was actually a very powerful experience. And I hadn't realized how much I was actually holding in me until I started to really write and then to read and the power of actually having people hear and acknowledge was incredible. Well, Stephanie, thank you. We would love to hear your lament today. Thankfully for us, it's a written lament. It's not a dance, <laughs> <laughs> but we would invite you, please do share that lament with us uh, now. Okay, so here it is. Father, where are you? My heart is filled with pain. Each day I hear of so many people that have died. Numbers, statistics, people I know, people I don't. It's overwhelming. I hear the cries of doctors, nurses, paramedics. There aren't enough beds. There's not enough room. I hear the cries of those grieving. My mom, my dad, my brother, my sister, my friend, all crying out, all on their own. Who hears their pain? Who sees their pain? So much loss, it's easy to become numb, to deny what's going on, to focus on other things, to fill my time, to look away in a search for joy. What's going on, Lord? What are you doing? What do we say? What can we say? Silence. There is no answer. The world's crying. My country, my people, they are crying. And silence. Father, what have we done? Why have you abandoned us so? Or is it really what have we done? Why did we abandon you so? Why did we push you out of our families, our schools, our lives? Why did we push you out of government and pass all those ungodly laws? Why did we scream and rage and blame you and fail to look at what we had done? Why did we fail to trust? I'm sorry, Lord. Forgive us, Lord. Draw us back to you. Help us to see. Open our eyes. Open our hearts. Establish us once again in your love. Put our feet on your rock and give us a firm place to stand. Amen. Amen. Stephanie, thank you so much for sharing with us. Your ability and your gifting with words um, is incredible but actually more than that what we hear is your heart as you just honestly speak to God and tell him how things are from your perspective and what I love about what you've written there is it starts in that place of um, raw anger almost perhaps that's not the right word but actually ends in the place of allowing God to call us back to himself. And I just think that's so powerful and so moving. Stephanie, thank you so much for sharing with us today. You, we really appreciate your ministry to us. And thank you for having me too, as well. It's been great to be with you. Not at all. God bless you. We'll see you again soon. Yeah, take care. <laughs>